Epidemiology tries to explain why people get disease. And the idea is that disease isn't random. It's things about the person, place, and behaviors and exposures that explain why people get disease. When we think about health, we often think about medical care and the focus on individual patients, but quite frankly, we need to think more broadly about populations and the health of populations. The Welch Center is a group of interdisciplinary faculty that each have their own content expertise. So for example, diabetes, high blood pressure, kidney disease, mental illness, and methods expertise. So clinical trials, observational studies, genetic epidemiology. The neat thing about doing epidemiology at Hopkins is that we're able to work across groups where insights by different people from different disciplines can add up the things that make problems solvable. So that's probably one of the most important lessons I've learned from my time at the Welch Center, actually, is that uh, more and more, uh, research is actually more uh, best played as a team sport. Um, it really is the case that um, having individuals who have kind of complementary perspectives complementary areas of expertise, um, just makes your work better, makes your, the way you ask questions better and how you answer questions a little bit better. Uh, it's a good debate because I think for CBD, you know... The great thing about having so many different disciplines, it's sort of a little window into all of those different fields of what's new, what's hot, what's actually coming up in each of those fields, and then bringing it to the table collectively, saying, hey, have you heard about this? How might we integrate this in this area? So it allows us to funnel things much more rapidly, where where if we didn't have all of those connections, all of these ideas would really stay siloed right here. It has grown incredibly. There's been so much more interest in this area of research, and um, we've just expanded to so many different disciplines and specialties, and it's just been wonderful. Public health is not just a theoretical uh, kind of phenomenon. It really is something that not only tangibly affects people clinically, it affects uh, our resources, it affects longevity, it affects uh, productivity, it affects all aspects of society. So it really is a central issue uh, for, for society. We invest a lot of money in discovering therapies and cures, but if we can't get those cures out to the population, into the the society, then a lot of what we've invested in science doesn't get realized. So that's, that's where the opportunity is. This School of Public Health, and in particular in the Welch Center, the combination of research that has a population perspective and the clinical perspective come together seamlessly. So if we can you know, craft solutions to these problems, uh, we, we can put a dent in some of the extraordinary cost and, and suffering from these chronic conditions. One of the neat things about the research that's done in the Wealth Center is what a huge impact it's had and how it touches lives. When we did the DASH clinical trial, there. Uh, we knew that salt affected blood pressure, we knew that weight affected blood pressure, that uh, alcohol intake affected blood pressure, but there were a lot of other nutrients where the evidence was very confusing. Um, so when we did the clinical trial, within months of its completion, it was adopted as national policy, and now the DASH diet is the benchmark diet recommended in 2005 and 2010 U.S. Dietary Guidelines. The ERIC study is, uh, has been important for Hopkins ever since it started back in 1987. And when I was at NIH, uh, I was responsible for originating the study. Uh, it was originally meant to uh, validate what's known about the predictors of coronary heart disease and to discover new ones. And now, uh, 1,500 publications later, we've done an awful lot of that. We can use the knowledge 
that we gain from epidemiology studying populations of people to best um, help estimate risk for diseases, what treatments work, even how treatments might affect a particular individual with, with different characteristics. The last study I was on was a spice study, and instead of having salt, flavoring our food with salt, they used other spices to flavor it. And um, that's the one that helped me to get off of the blood pressure medicine. And at the, at the end of it, I found that my kidney function had improved. I found out now, too much sugar is not good for you. And I learned those kind of things and learned how to prepare certain foods restricting those items. Both the staff and the participants get it. So they give a few hours of their time and actually their data becomes a legacy forever used by scientists to make progress. It's rewarding to come here. Oh, good. It's a pleasure. It's important to do research for the people who are going to come in the future that, that the researchers should have this information it should be documented and, um, and progress should be made to, in this case, to make people healthier as, as the generations come. I came to Hopkins um, to do a three-year clinical research fellowship uh, in general internal medicine and I was based out of the Welch Center. And so uh, I was a trainee there <laughs> and uh, it was an amazing opportunity just to see how people collaborate and work with one another, um, you know, and access to amazing uh, mentors uh, who've had wonderful research careers, but still take the time to <laughs> sit and dedicate hours to your project and your development, and really just felt like home. You know, it's funny because when I decided to come to Hopkins, so I had been working previously at the New York City Health Department and I had been working on nutrition policy, specifically on sodium reduction, and I was interested in taking my career to the next level and really getting a better sense of the epidemiology. And so when I came to visit Hopkins, they were just incredibly warm and incredibly welcoming. And, you know, and that's, that welcoming spirit that I felt in my visit has really been true to my experience at the Welch Center. It allows you not to have to calculate odds ratios, but you can actually calculate risk ratios. Which is so there's a culture of that in the Welch Center of uh, people who are more senior showing the younger people the ropes and showing them how to be successful in science and how to build collaborative teams and um, how to ask the right questions and how to answer them using sophisticated <laughs> methods. No, I, I mean, you, ha you have to balance the issues, right? I mean, we want to do appropriate statistical analyses, but we also want to do uh, things that are easy to explain. And, that people and, and it's just so gratifying because it really does feel like a family and we can see how the science is growing and we can see how each individual sort of has had a unique mark on that. So the Wealth Center is all about the people. And the neat thing is that great science comes out of great people and great scientists. We have been an incubator for leaders. We've had influential science that's guided policy. I could say for 25 years, you know, we've been doing important research and we've been having fun doing it. And uh, that's, that's why we're here.